Ooh. What's up YouTube? It's your boy 728. Today is Tuesday, so that means it's time for another two minute Tuesday. Let's go. So today's two minute Tuesday video is about tip vectoring and what that means. So let's start it off by explaining what happens when you're behind the wheel and you're turning the car. There's a lot that happens in your car when you turn the steering wheel. For sports cars, all about nimble handling and great cornering ability, there are engineering tricks that manufacturers use to control precisely what happens when you enter a turn and take that corner. challenge that they have is that all four wheels are going to be doing something different. They're going to be going at different speeds and they might not be able to accept the high demands that the driver wants. So think of a corner as two separate circles. So your outside wheels have to travel farther so that means they have to be going faster to go around the larger circle and your inside wheels they have to be going slower, so they are going to take a shorter route, a smaller circle. The problem with that is, is that if the outside wheels are not traveling faster, you have what's called understeer. So instead of you going around the curve like this, you're going around the curve like this, when you want to be going this way. The inverse of that is, if your outside is going too fast, you'll go like this, and that's called oversteer. So manufacturers normally want you to have a nice balance where you can just go around the apex of the corner as quickly as possible. So what they do to influence this, this behavior is called torque vectoring. There are many systems available today, uh, torque sensing differentials, which are normally electronic. There are, um, there are mechanical locking differentials available. Normally what that does is those only come into play if they sense a slip, a wheel slip. So if one wheel is going too fast or a lot faster than the other, there's clutches that will lock up to keep the wheels in sync. You may not always want that when you're cornering because again, that might lead to the understeer or oversteer characteristic. So what they've devised as this engineering um, you know, study is that they can either use brakes uh, to cause torque vectoring, which will break one of the inside tires in the corner to make it go slower that will make the car turn in the way you want to or they have electronic differentials which will take the power from the engine and send the power to the outside wheels that will make them go faster so again causing you to go around the corner as fast as you want to without having understeer or oversteer manufacturers have gotten so good at including the systems that it's pretty much imperceptible to most drivers. Unless you're a trained race car driver, most of us don't know what's happening when we're driving our cars, you know, uh, spiritedly. And it just happens. Some manufacturers have combined the brake-based torque vectoring with electronic differentials to basically have torque vectoring at all four corners of the car. They've gotten so good at this technology that you can essentially take a car out on the track uh, which was really impossible just you know 10 years ago that doesn't have a limited slip differential and you can still have a real good time and set really fast laps so I hope that you guys enjoyed this two minute Tuesday video session if you did hook your boy up with a like remember I'll be doing these every Tuesday so subscribe to get notified so that you don't miss the video and while you're at it, make sure you check out some of my other dope videos. Until next time, your boy 728, out of here.